Since this channel is all about how to correctly apply the technical analysis, I have decided to talk about the candlestick patterns, because they really do work, if the application is correct. As I have been using them for the past 20 years. In this video, I will introduce you to each candlestick pattern that I know of, and will provide examples on the live chart for your reference. To help you understand how the pattern should look like, and how to determine if it's tradable. Before we begin, please take the following points into consideration. First, the candlestick patterns are more profitable, when combined with other technical patterns, and supporting technical factors. Second, candlesticks that form on the low timeframes are worthless. So anything lower than the 1 hour chart should be ignored. Third, the length of the candle's wick really does determine its strength and impact on the market. Fourth, unlike chart patterns where we don't look for a perfect pattern formation. The candlestick patterns on the other hand, must look perfect, by the book, in order to become tradable. With that being said, if you are a beginner, please pay attention to the following brief introduction to candlesticks. However, if you are an experienced trader, you can skip the introduction. This is the candle's body. The length of the body can be either long or short, depending on who won the fight between the buyers and the sellers, and by how much. And every candle represents what happened during the fight between the buyers and the sellers during the time period which the candle has lasted for. So if we are looking at the 5 minutes time frame for example, the time that it will take for every new candle to close will be 5 minutes. And if we are looking at the daily time frame, then the time that it will take for every new candle to close will be 1 day. So, in other words, the time that it takes for every candle to open and close will be determined by the time frame you pick. While the time frame determines how much reliable a candlestick pattern can be. And the following are the most common and most recognized time frames that you can pick on your charts. The 1 minute. The 5 minutes. The 15 minutes. The 30 minutes. The 1 hour. The 4 hours. The daily. The weekly. And finally the monthly. As for the rest of the time frames you see, such as the 3 minutes time frame, I have personally never used them in the past 20 years of my trading journey, and I have never ran into a successful trader who uses them. So, to keep it simple, I recommend that you just focus on the time frames, which I have just mentioned, and set the 1 hour as the minimum time frame, because these are the most effective. Keep in mind that the candle body can't be determined until the candle closes. Nevertheless, if the candle body closes above the open price, then we call it a bullish candle because buyers were stronger than the sellers during the candle time period. Moreover, if the body closes below the open price, then we call it a bearish candle because the sellers were stronger than the buyers during that time period. And this is the candle's wick. For your information, some people call it the candle's shadow. The wick can appear above or below the candle, and it tells us what happened during the price action, which took place during the formation of the candle. The length of the wick is extremely important to determine if we should count the candlestick pattern or simply ignore it. More on that later. Remember, a bullish candle will close above the opening price. And, a bearish candle will close below the opening price. Now that you have familiarized yourself with how the Japanese candlesticks form. Thus, I will begin to explain about the candlestick patterns, and will go over them one by one. Before we dive into it, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. The first four candlestick patterns, which I will go over now, do look very similar, and are easy to memorize. Let's get started with the hammer candlestick. It's a reversal pattern. And a powerful buy signal. And, it constitutes of either, a one bearish. Or, a one bullish candle. Furthermore, the candle has a small body. With a wick below it. The wick length should be at least two times the length of the body. 
Moreover, the wick above the candle should be very small or does not exist. The hammer shows up at the end of a down move, signaling a possible reversal. Nevertheless, the bullish hammer is usually stronger than the bearish hammer. And I personally trade the bullish hammer without demanding a secondary strong technical factor to be combined with it. It really can be a very powerful buy signal. As long as the general price trend is moving up on the higher time frames. The following is an example for the hammer candlestick on a real chart so that you understand how this pattern should look like. This chart is for the Australian dollar against the US dollar. Notice the small body of the candle with no wick above it and a long wick below it. Also notice how the price has slowed down and stabilized after the bearish hammer showed up at the end of the down move. Which also signals that the market is looking at the hammer and has actually recognized it. And that is a technical confirmation. Furthermore, remember when I mentioned in the introduction of this video that the candlestick patterns must look perfect by the book in order to become tradable. Take a look at this past candle, doesn't it look like a hammer? The answer is, no it does not, and for two reasons. First, the candle body is too small. Second, the wick above it is too long. Even one of these two reasons is enough to discard this candle. Next is the inverted hammer candlestick. It's a reversal pattern and a buy signal. And it constitutes of either a one bearish or a one bullish candle. Moreover, the candle has a small body with a wick above it. The wick above the candle should be at least two times the length of the body. While the length of the wick under the candle should be either very small or does not exist. The inverted hammer pattern shows up at the end of a down move, signaling a possible reversal. The following is an example for how to trade a candlestick pattern once combined with a very simple technical factor on the chart. To produce a stronger buy signal. This example is on the US dollar against the Canadian dollar chart. Notice how the inverted hammer's body looks like. While the wick below it is barely noticeable. This inverted hammer candle appeared in a down move. After the price has made a fourth retrace down to test the uptrend line. Moreover, the combination between the inverted hammer and the solid uptrend line, which is considered a strong supporting technical factor, which has resulted in giving us an overall stronger buy signal. If you like this video and you want to see more educational videos in the future, please remember to share, like, and hit the subscribe button. Next is the hanging man candlestick. It's a reversal pattern and a sell signal and it constitutes of either a one bearish or a one bullish candle. Nevertheless, the candle has a small body with a wick below it that is at least two times the length of its body, while the wick above it is either very small or does not exist. This pattern shows up at the end of an up move and signals a possible reversal. The following are examples of both correct and incorrect inverted hammer patterns, so that you understand how this pattern should look like. First, let's start with the correct example. On the British pound against the US dollar. We had the market moving in a downtrend. But the price went up to retest a resistance line. And the failure to break the line has been made obvious once the hanging man candle appeared. By the way, these three candles here are called the tweezer tops pattern, which I will talk about later in this video. And the combination between the market downtrend, the resistance line, the tweezer tops pattern, and the hanging man pattern. All these technical factors have worked together in a combination and has given us a stronger sell signal. Notice the small body of the candle and the small, barely noticeable wick above it. It would have had been a much better candle if the size of the body was bigger. Such a small size of the hanging man candle's body will reduce the strength of the pattern. 
however, the sell trade was still valid because the reduction of the strength was compensated for with the combination of all the other supporting factors which I have mentioned. And the way how I deal with this kind of problem is by reducing the size of my sell trade position. Now let's move on to the incorrect examples of the hanging man pattern. The first incorrect example shows a candle that appeared on the top before the market has made a strong downward reversal. Notice how big the candle body is. A hanging man candlestick must have a small body. So even if the lower wick was two times longer than the body, the candle still won't qualify as a hanging man pattern. Finally, here is the second incorrect example of the hanging man pattern. The candle appeared at the top. A lot of traders might mistake it for a hanging man. However, the length of the upper wick is too long. And for that reason, it does not qualify as a hanging man pattern. Next is the shooting star candlestick. It's a reversal pattern and a powerful sell signal and constitutes of either a one bearish or a one bullish candle. Nevertheless, the candle has a small body with a wick above it that is at least two times longer than its body. While the wick below it is either very small or does not exist. This pattern shows up at the end of a price up move, signaling a possible reversal. The bearish shooting star is usually stronger than the bullish shooting star and I personally trade the bearish shooting star without demanding a secondary strong technical factors to be combined with it. As long as the general price trend is moving down on the higher time frames. Here is a live example of the shooting star pattern to help you understand. This is the euro against the US dollar chart. And as you can see, we had a perfect shooting star pattern which has formed after a failed break attempt of the previous high. Furthermore, the price has immediately reacted to this pattern with a huge sell-off. Notice the earlier candle that may look as a shooting star. Can you tell why it should be discarded? I think now it has become clear to you how important the length of the wick is relative to the length of the body of the candle. Now that I have covered all these four patterns, I have arranged them all together here to help you avoid the confusion. If you see this candle shape at the top of an up move, then it's the shooting star candlestick. And if you see this candle shape at the bottom of a down move, then it's the hammer candlestick. I have rated the strength of both the shooting star and the hammer as powerful. Which means I will not demand a second supporting technical factor in order to trade based on them as long as the direction of my trade is with the direction of the general trend on the higher time frames. And of course, if I find other strong supporting technical factors, I will increase the size of my trade position. Furthermore, if you see this candle shape at the top of an up move, then it's the hanging man candlestick. And finally, if you see this candle shape at the bottom of a down move, then it's the inverted hammer candlestick. And according to my own personal experience, I have rated the strength of these two as a medium strength, and of course I will demand a combination of technical factors in order to trade based on these two candles. Otherwise, I won't invest my money. By the way, I follow the same approach with every candlestick that I have rated as a medium strength. You can check out my Japanese candlestick strength rating down in the description below, and keep in mind that this is based on my own personal reference after watching the charts for the past 20 years. If you have reached to this point in the video and you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section and I will certainly respond to it. Also, please support my channel by hitting the like, share, and subscribe buttons. Next is the dodgy candlestick. It's a weak reversal pattern and can be either a buy or a sell signal. It constitutes of one candle which has failed to form a body, which indicates that both the buyers and the sellers got exhausted and the direction of the market might either reverse or continue its path. Furthermore, the length of the wick is relatively short. If the wick is too long, then it no longer can be considered a dodgy candlestick. 
The dodgy comes in various shapes, and any candle shape that comes without a body, and short wicks, is considered a dodgy. Of course, some people will prefer to memorize the name of every dodgy shape, but I prefer to keep it simple and call them all, a dodgy. Generally speaking, the dodgy, with its various shapes, is risky to trade, as it could give you many false signals. Since it originally forms when neither the buyers, nor the sellers have made a significant impact on the market. And for this reason, it must be combined with other technical factors, to become tradable. So, the dodgy can be used as a confirmation for your other technical signals, whereas you would have had taken that trade anyways, regardless if it had showed up or not. Here is an example of the dodgy candlestick on the Australian dollar against the US dollar. The dodgy appeared, after the market has retraced down, and hit the 50% Fibonacci level. The combination, of these two technical factors, along with the third technical factor, which is the breakout candle, with a full body and no wicks. All these three technical factors, have confirmed one another, and produced a medium strength by signal from here. So again, keep in mind that the dodgy, must, be combined with more technical factors, to become tradable. Next, is the spinning tops, and bottoms candlestick. It's similar to the dodgy candlestick, where neither the buyers nor the sellers, have made a significant impact on the market, and it's a single candle, that could be either a bearish or a bullish candle. It has a small body, with a small wick from one side, or both sides. And it indicates that market could go in any direction from here, up, down or sideways. If it appears at the end of an up price move, then we call it spinning tops. While if it appears at the end of a down move, then we call it, the spinning bottoms. If you see this candle, then stay out of the market, unless you have it combined with a few technical factors, to support your objective view on the next market direction. Preferably, it needs to appear at a strong support or resistance level, to even count as a technical factor. Here is an example, of the spinning bottoms pattern on the Ethereum daily chart. Notice how the spinning bottom candle, has appeared exactly at the support level, where the price has faced a strong rejection from, in the recent past. So you could either buy from here, or, wait for the third technical factor, which in this case is the long breakout bullish candle. By the way, this breakout candle is called the outside candlestick pattern which I will cover later in this video. The outside candle has a medium strength. And if you combine it with the spinning bottom candlestick, along with the solid support level, you will get a much stronger buy signal. Allow me to clarify, the reason why I have called it a solid level, is because the market has proven that it's a solid support, because the price got a strong rejection from in the past. So all these three technical factors. 1. 2. 3. Will give us a much better buy signal, and you buy only once the outside candle close. So just to outline the importance of understanding the difference of the strength between the first suggested buy signal. And the second suggested buy signal. If I was to trade on the first buy, I would open only one contract, versus if I trade on the second buy, I would open five contracts instead of just one. In other words, I would risk 400% more, on the second buy signal, compared to how much I would risk if I trade on the first buy signal. As I have mentioned already, the spinning tops and bottoms is a weak candlestick. And you should only trade the weak candlesticks if you would have had taken the trade anyways, regardless if the weak candlestick has shown up or not during the market formation. Remember, I have outlined the strength of every candlestick pattern in the description of this video, so you can write it down, as I am sure it will improve your trading. Next, is the high wave candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and can be either a buy or a sell signal. And, it constitutes of one candle, which could be either a bearish, or a bullish candle. If it shows up at the end of a price down move, then it's a buy signal. And if it shows up at the end of a price up move, then it's a sell signal. It has a small body. With a long wick from both sides. The more equal in length these two wicks are, the better. 
With that being said, keep in mind that this pattern can only be traded if combined with other chart technical factors. The high wave pattern is most effective on the daily chart time frame. And since both the upper and lower wicks are long, the candle can only form during a volatile market. The high wave candle can work on some instruments better than others. Here is a small tip, if you backtest the high wave candlestick pattern, on the cryptocurrency market, you will find it more repetitive and effective, compared with the other markets. And when it comes to the forex market, I have found it significantly more effective on the Swiss franc. For those of you who don't know what backtesting is. In simple words, it's when you look for the number of times, which a pattern has showed up in the past, on the chart of a specific instrument, to find out how many times the pattern has showed up, and how successful it has been. Backtesting is very important, that if you trade a pattern without backtesting it on the chart first, then you would be gambling, not trading. To further clarify on how backtesting works, here is the Bitcoin chart as an example. I would scroll back into the chart history and identify the different patterns which I would run into. And I would keep on marking these patterns and see how the market has reacted to them. And I will keep scrolling back on the chart for a minimum of 10 years until I have collected a sufficient amount of data on the patterns and find out how repetitive and effective the patterns have been. To determine how the Bitcoin is likely to behave once these patterns show up again in the future. And that's backtesting in a nutshell. Now, let's get back to the candlestick patterns. Here are two live examples for the high wave candlestick. The first example is on the US dollar against the Swiss franc chart. We have a high wave candle pattern which has formed at the top of an uptrend. Notice how the small body should look like. And how both the upper and lower wicks were long and equal in length. The high wave candlestick showed up inside the boarding chart pattern. We sell once the price breaks the lower band of the boarding pattern, and we end up with a sell trade, which is supported by two technical factors. If you want to learn more about chart patterns, I have made a video that covers all the chart patterns, and for your convenience, I have left a link for the chart patterns video in the description down below. The second example is on the Bitcoin chart, as you can see, the high wave candle first showed up, then was followed by the shooting star pattern. The high wave candle body is too small, which makes it a weak candle signal. However, that weakness was compensated with a perfect and powerful bearish shooting star candlestick. So we ended up with two candlestick patterns, confirming one another. Next, is the bullish engulfing candlestick. It's a reversal pattern. And a strong buy signal. It constitutes of two candles, with long bodies. The first, is where the price makes a decent drop, with a long bearish candle. While the second, is where the price comes back up sharply, to close above the open price of the previous candle, with a longer bullish candle. Remember, the bullish candle closing price, needs to be above the first candle open price. While the wick of the second candle, has to be higher than the previous candle. The bullish engulfing pattern shows up during a down move, signaling a possible reversal. Nevertheless, you should only consider this candlestick pattern if it forms on the one hour time frame and above. Although it can produce powerful buy signals, you must place your stop loss below the bullish candle, which means you will end up with a wide stop loss. And for that reason, it must be combined with other technical factors to offset the risk and become tradable. Here is an example of the bullish engulfing pattern on the Ethereum chart. The price dropped down sharply to test a support zone where it has previously got strong rejection from. So, this support zone counts as an additional technical factor to support our buy decision and increases the probability to form a double bottom chart pattern. Because the repeated strong rejections off a support zone is a proof that the buyers are serious about keeping the price above it. Allow me to make it clear. Hypothetically speaking, if the price has never bounced from this support zone before and has just bounced now for the first time, 
and formed a bullish engulfing pattern as a result, then the market might be trapping the buyers, and the bullish engulfing pattern in that case could be a very risky buy signal. So in this case, since the double bottom can be traded once the neckline is broken, we can enter half of our trade size from the bullish engulfing pattern, and then at the second half, once the double bottom neckline is broken. As I mentioned earlier, I have made a detailed video that explains how to trade every chart pattern, and you can find the link in the description. Finally, here is an example of an incorrect bullish engulfing. Can you guess why it's incorrect? Before I give you the answer, go ahead and pause this video to give it a deeper thought. The answer is It's because the previous bearish candle is relatively too short. Did you guess it right? Next is the bearish engulfing candlestick. It's a reversal pattern and a strong sell signal. It constitutes of two candles with long bodies. The first is where the price makes a decent rise with a long bullish candle. While the second is where the price comes back down sharply to close below the open price of the previous candle with a longer bearish candle. Moreover, the second candle closing price needs to be below the first candle open price. While the wick of the second candle must be lower than the wick of the previous candle. The bearish engulfing pattern shows up during an up move, signaling a possible reversal. Nevertheless, you should only consider this candlestick pattern if it forms on the one hour time frame and above. Finally, similar to the bullish engulfing. The bearish engulfing can produce a strong sell signal. However, you must place your stop loss above the bearish candle, which means you will end up with a wide stop loss. And for that reason, it must be combined with other supporting technical factors to offset the risk and become tradable. Here is an example of the bearish engulfing pattern on the US dollar against the Swiss franc. In this case, we have two bearish engulfing patterns next to each other. Moreover, by adding the two together, we get an incredibly strong sell signal where we can double the size of our sell trade. So, the first bearish engulfing is the supporting technical factor. Next is the tweezer tops and bottoms. It's a reversal pattern. The tweezer tops is a sell signal while the tweezer bottoms is a buy signal. This pattern must constitute of at least two candles. Unlike all the previously mentioned candlestick patterns in this video, which require a specific candle shape in order to qualify. The tweezer tops and bottoms pattern on the other hand, comes in various shapes, and forms at a strong support or resistance, with wicks that are unable to penetrate the strong level. Nevertheless, three to four candles, would be the ideal number of candles, this pattern may constitute of, to produce a buy or sell signal. By the way, I am only showing these shapes as an example. However, in the real world, the pattern does not have any specific candle shape. Keep in mind that the candle wicks must not be too short. Nor too long. Otherwise, the pattern will be discarded. Furthermore, you should only consider this candlestick pattern if it forms on the one hour time frame and above and must be combined with a strong technical factor in order to become tradable. The way how I personally trade this pattern is that I look for at least three small candles with their wicks either able or unable to touch a strong level. The tweezer tops and bottoms can be traded only when combined with a technical factor and I prefer to see it form once it touches a solid trend line. This pattern works great in the Forex market especially once you back it up with a trend line, as a supporting technical factor. Here is an example of the tweezers tops pattern on the one hour chart. It formed with three candles after touching the trend line zone. Notice how every candle looks different, while the last candle is also a shooting star. So, the trend line. And the shooting star candlestick. Act as supportive technical factors which gives us a strong sell signal. And here is a tweezers bottom pattern. 
Notice how it formed at a strong support zone, where the price has made a strong bounce from in the past, while the candle of the pattern is a high wave candlestick. So, the support zone and the high wave candlestick act as supportive technical factors, which gives us a strong buy signal. If you have reached to this point in the video and you have any questions that you want to clarify, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. Also, please support the channel by hitting the share, like, and subscribe buttons. For the remaining candlestick patterns, which I will go over now, are more difficult to trade, either because they are generally too weak, or, they appear very infrequently, so you might run into one of them, once in a blue moon. Which makes the backtest data unreliable. Furthermore, I have modified the rules for some of them, to make them more profitable, and reliable. So, you don't have to waste years of your life, trying to figure out how to make them work. Next, is the inside and outside candlesticks. It's a reversal pattern, and can be either a buy or a sell signal. A buy signal, if it shows up during a down move, and indicates that the market has entered an oversold territory. And it could be a sell signal if it shows up during an up move, and indicates that the market has entered an overbought territory. Let's start with the outside candle. It shows up once the prices slowly approach a strong support or resistance zone, and then sharply reverses in the opposite direction. And as a result, the length of the last candle that shows up, will contain the length of the previous single candle, or the length of a group of candles. And that last candle is called, the outside candle. While the higher the number of the previous candles, that are contained within the, the length of the outside candle, the better. Actually let me rephrase that in a better way. If the body of the last candle does not contain the body and wicks of at least three candles, then it won't be tradable. I understand that this statement conflicts with what is being taught on the social media, because they all tell you that even if the last candle contains only one or two candles, it's still considered a tradable, outside candlestick pattern. Which is not true. Moreover, you can run a simple backtest, to understand why I insist on a minimum of three previous candles, which makes the total number of candles required to validate this pattern, is four candles, including the outside candle. The outside candlestick pattern, is a medium strength pattern, and can only be traded if combined with supporting technical factors. I would personally never trade the outside candle, unless I see it form after either a powerful, or a medium strength candle, such as the hammer, or the high wave candlesticks. While the length of the body of the outside candle must be long enough, to show that the market is heavily preparing to reverse its direction. Now, let's move on to the inside candle. It also shows up once the price approaches a strong support or resistance level, however, that approach occurs fast, with a decent size first candle, which is called the inside candle. Followed by an immediate, and significant, slow down in the price action, whereas the following candle, or group of candles, will show a slow, but consistent price reversal. The slow price action, can result in one or more candles, with the length of both the body and wick of the following candles, contained within the inside candle. With that being said, the length of the candle, that appears right after the inside candle, must not be too small, and the longer it is, the more probable the reversal will be. And here is why I don't like trading on the inside candlestick pattern, and that is because it requires a slowdown in the price action, for it to form, once it hits a strong resistance or support level, and that slowdown, will also add the probability to continue within the same market direction, and hit your stop loss as a result. Which makes it a weak candlestick pattern. And I recommend that you avoid trading on the inside candlestick. Allow me to be more clear on this. There is no way to determine the actual strength of a support, or a resistance level, without watching how the market reacts once it hits the level. So, if you see the price reversing fast, and sharply after it hitting a support level for example, then you know for sure that the support is very strong. On the other hand, if you see the price reversing slowly, after hitting a support level, 
then it could be either that the buyers are very weak, and the price is preparing to break the support level. Or, the sellers are very weak and can't initiate enough momentum to break below the support level, which will result in a price reversal. And that is why we have strong patterns, such as the bearish, and the bullish engulfing patterns, which clearly show the strength of a price level with a sharp reversal. And we have weak patterns, such as the dodgy, the inside candle, and spinning tops and bottoms candlesticks. Along with the bullish and bearish harami which I will go through later in this video. All these patterns, have been marked as weak, from my 20 years of trading experience, simply because they form once the price slows down after hitting a support or resistance level. Next, is the dark cloud cover candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and a sell signal. And it constitutes of two candles. The first, is where the price makes a decent rise, with a long body bullish candle. And please pay attention here. The second candle, is where the price gaps up, so it opens above the previous candle close. Nevertheless, it closes at 50% of the previous candle body length, or lower. While the lower the close of the second candle, the better. Next, is the piercing line candlestick. It's reversal pattern, and a buy signal. And it constitutes of two candles. The first, is where the price makes a decent drop, with a long body bearish candle. And here too, the second, is where the price gaps down, so it opens below the previous candle close. Nevertheless, it closes at 50% of the previous candle body length, or higher. While the higher the close of the second candle, the better. And here is why I don't like trading on neither the dark cloud, nor the piercing line candlesticks, and that is because they both require the market to gap, which is rare. And on top of that, they require to have the price action to trade in a certain way right after the market gaps, which is even more rare. Nevertheless, I prefer to trade on candlesticks, that show more often on the chart, so I can backtest them to determine how the instrument reacts to them before investing my money. As backtesting is very important to me, and it should be important to you too. Next, is the bullish harami candlestick. Harami is the Japanese word for pregnant. It's a reversal pattern, and a buy signal. And it constitutes of two candles. The first, is where the price makes a sharp drop, with a long body bearish candle. While the second, is a short body bullish candle, with wicks that are either too small, or do not exist. Next, is the bearish harami candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and a sell signal. And it constitutes of two candles. The first, is where the price makes a sharp rise, with a long body bullish candle. While the second, is a short body bearish candle, with wicks that are either too small, or do not exist. And here is why I prefer not to trade on neither the bullish, or bearish harami candlesticks. It's because it requires that the price, does not have a strong reaction, after it touches a strong support or resistance level. Which makes it difficult to determine whether the market has recognized the level, and wants to actually reverse, instead of to continue to break that level. In other words, it makes it difficult to pair this pattern, with a supportive technical factor. Next, is the evening star candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and a sell signal. And it constitutes of three candles. The first, is where the price makes a strong push-up, with a long body bullish candle. The second, is where the price pushes further, and then halts, forming a short body candle. And finally, the third is where the price makes a sharp drop, with a long body bearish candle, which can either be longer, or shorter, than the first candle. Keep in mind, that the wick of the middle candle, has to register the highest high among the three candle. Next, is the morning star candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and a buy signal. And it constitutes of three candles. The first, is where the price drops down sharply, with a long body bearish candle. The second, is where the price drops further, and then halts, forming a short body candle. 
And finally, the third is where the price makes a strong push back up, with a long body bullish candle, which can either be longer, or shorter, than the first candle. And here is why I don't like to trade on neither the morning star, nor the evening star candlesticks. It's because they do not show up that often. However, when they do show up, they are not consistently profitable. Furthermore, the ones that are actually consistently profitable, are the ones that have the third candle, close beyond the first candle open price. And that will rarely happen. Which means it's not possible to backtest it, since it will rarely show up during the backtest. I have rated the strength of the pattern as a medium strength. While the patterns that show up with a third candle, that does not close beyond the first candle open price, are not tradable. If you have reached to this point in the video, and you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section, and I will certainly respond to it. Also remember to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Next, is the bearish rising 3 methods candlestick. It's a continuation pattern, and a sell signal and it constitutes of five candles. The first, is where the price drops down sharply, with a long body, bearish candle. The second, third and fourth, is where the prices rise slowly, with three short body bullish candles. Whereas these three candles are contained within the body of the first candle. So the price won't drop below the lowest prices registered by the first candle. Nevertheless, the price won't rise above the first candle open price. And finally, the fifth and last candle, is where the price makes another sharp drop, with a long body, bearish candle, that either has small wicks, or no wicks at all. And closes below the first candle's low. Next, is the bullish rising 3 methods candlestick. It's a continuation pattern, and a buy signal and it constitutes of five candles. Similar to the bearish rising, in its rules and formation. The first, is where the price makes a strong rise up, with a long body, bullish candle. The second, third and fourth, is where the prices drop slowly, with three short body, bearish candles. Whereas these three candles are contained within the body of the first candle. So the price won't rise above the highest price registered by the first candle. Moreover, the price won't drop below the first candle open price. And finally, the fifth and last candle, is where the price makes another strong rise up, with a long body, bullish candle, that either has small wicks, or no wicks at all. And closes above the first candle's high. I have rated the strength of these two patterns, as powerful. However, I do not agree with the number of candles that is should constitute of. For example, if you end up with. 4. 5. Or even 6 candles in the middle, instead of only 3 candles, it will still be a powerful and tradable pattern. As long as the last candle closes beyond the first candle's high, or, low with either small wicks, or no wicks at all, and a long body candle. Nevertheless, if the last candle closes far away from the first candle's high, low, then the pattern becomes not tradable. Because if you execute the trade, you will end up with a wide stop loss, and a small target. Which means, a very bad risk to reward ratio. And just to clarify, I do not avoid trading on this pattern. However, I have added it to the list of candlestick patterns, that I avoid trading on, because I strongly disagree with the number of candles, which this pattern should constitute of. Next, and the final candlestick, is the two reversal candlestick. It's a reversal pattern, and could be either a buy or a sell signal. Moreover, as the name implies, it constitutes of two candles. Both candles are long body candles, with wicks that are either too small, or do not exist. While the length of these two candles, is equal to one another. If it shows up at the end of an up move, then it's a sell signal. And if it shows up at the end of a down move, then it's a buy signal. 
This candlestick pattern must be traded on the one hour time frame and above. Nevertheless, it's a medium strength pattern, it requires you to place a wide stop loss, and for that reason, it can't be traded on unless you combine it with a supportive technical factor. Furthermore, just like all the other candlestick pattern, it must show up during a clear market trend. This pattern looks similar to the bullish and bearish engulfing pattern, which I have pointed out for earlier in this video. The only difference is that the two reversal candlestick pattern must have very short wicks. And better to have no wicks at all. Nevertheless, unlike the engulfing pattern, the two reversal pattern is not required to close beyond the first candle open price. While the more equal in length these two candles are, the better. From my own experience, the two reversal pattern is very difficult to trade, and if you are a newbie, I strongly suggest that you focus on the bearish and bullish engulfing pattern instead, as it's so much easier to trade, and a lot more profitable. I have just covered the candlestick patterns, which I have been studying and observing during my 20 years trading journey. However, there are a lot more candlestick patterns which I did not mention in this video. Such as the dumpling top. The tower bottom. The three white soldiers. The three black crows. And so many more candlestick patterns. And the reason why I did not mention them is because they simply do not work, and I have not ran into anyone who managed to profit from them consistently. And highly doubt that they will work for you. If you are serious about becoming a trader, you will learn that the vast majority of the educational material you may find on the internet are a waste of time. And my advice is that you keep it simple and focus on what is consistent, proven to work, and backtest successfully. Before I finish this video, I feel that I should shed some light on an important topic, which I have mentioned about earlier in this video. Which is the market slowdowns, and why we should pay attention to them. First of all, a market slowdown at a strong support, or resistance level for example, indicates that the market has recognized that level, and as a result, the slowdown could mean either that the market is unable to kick the price away from the strong level, which means a breakout will happen soon. Or, it could mean that the market is unable to push the price any further. Therefore, is preparing for a sizable retrace from that support or resistance level. So, the slowdown in this case, creates confusion. Which means that the candlestick patterns that require the market to slow down in order to form, such as the dodgy, the spinning tops and bottoms, the inside candle and the bearish and bullish harami, will only form when the market is uncertain about the next move. Which makes them always remain weak patterns. Second, if the market slows down immediately after a candlestick pattern shows up, such as the hammer or the bullish engulfing, that also indicates that the market has recognized that pattern, which adds strength to the pattern and increases the probability of success. Third, a slowdown after a breakout from a strong level increases the probability of success for the breakout, so the price is more likely to carry on with the direction of the breakout. So, in case of the bullish and bearish rising three methods, if the market slows down after the first candle and prints more than three candles as a result, this will add strength to the pattern and increase the probability of success. Finally, a slowdown before retesting a trend line for the fourth time means that the market has recognized the trend line and that should add strength to the trend line. And as a result, any candlestick pattern that forms after the price slows down and touches the trend line for the fourth time, the pattern will gain strength and become stronger. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I have shared with you the candlestick patterns based on my 20 years of trading experience. Furthermore, I have also outlined the strength of every candlestick pattern down in the description below. Reminder, I have made a video that goes through every chart pattern, and I have outlined how to trade them too. Make sure you watch it. Thank you for watching, and please remember to support this channel by hitting the share, like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, so you get notified of any of the high quality, educational materials, which I will upload in the future. Good luck.